Hey, when I was in high school, I had a really strict English teacher and you won't believe what I got in trouble for doing. I'll tell you that story at the end. I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, today I'm going to give you three tips to improve your English. Now, these tips are going to literally help you take your English to the next level because they're going to help you change the way you think. So let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one is right here. Compare yourself to yourself. That's right. Don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. Now let me explain what this actually means. So basically you need to analyze your progress based on where you were in the past. You need to see, for example, how many new vocabulary words have you learned? How many new expressions have you learned? Are you able to speak longer now than you were in the past? These are all things that you can do when you compare yourself to yourself. Now, let me look at three reasons. Let me show you three reasons why this is so important. Okay. So the first reason we have for why this is so important is that this allows you to recognize the improvements you have made. Number two, this is so important because it helps you to see which areas you need to work on more. I can personally remember when I was studying Korean, I had an issue or a hard time with the vocabulary and sometimes with the idioms. So I was able to recognize that because I was comparing myself to myself. So I made it a point to study those two things more. Again, when you compare yourself to yourself, you will also be able to see the areas you need to work on more. Now, the third reason why this is so important, it is because it encourages you to continue working towards your goals. When you compare yourself, you're able to see how close you are to achieving your goals. For example, if your goal is to be able to speak to a native English speaker for five minutes, you can see how close you are to that goal. Well, maybe you saw a foreigner or you saw someone online and you had a conversation with them for one minute. That means you have four more minutes to go. Okay. So again, tip number one is compare yourself to yourself. Now let me show you exactly how to do this. Okay. In three short steps. Here we go. So the first thing you want to do is set your timer for five minutes and write about your day. Now, again, I'm looking at the example of someone whose goal is to be a better writer, to write better in English. So again, comparing yourself to yourself. First, you're going to set a timer for five minutes and write about your day. Then what's going to happen is you are going to, on the next day, set your timer for 10 minutes and write about your day. Then the third thing is on the third day, you're going to review both of your journals and see what the differences are. For example, the length, the information, the order, the feeling, etc. Then you're going to analyze yourself. Trust me, this works because you will be able to see, ah, the one I wrote on day one was pretty good, but Day two was even better because I gave more information, let's say related to the five W's. Remember I've taught you guys that who, what, when, where, and why. So again, you can do this in three different steps. Okay. Now moving on to tip number two, here we go. So the second tip is learn something new or interesting. Basically you need to search for an English video article or podcast that is about something you are interested in. Now I'm going to give you the three reasons why this is so important, but I want to remind you, remember as your teacher, my goal is to help you enjoy English. A part of enjoying English is studying things you are interested in. You know that I like cooking. 
I like sports. I like exercise. So when I was studying Korean, I would watch cooking programs. I would watch shows about sports. Why? Because it was easier for me to grasp and understand the information and to retain it. So let's see three specific reasons why this is so important. Okay, here we go back to my screen. Now, the first reason why this is important is it will help you retain or keep information in English faster. Number two, it will help you make fast connections, which will result in you using the information faster. Like I mentioned to you, I love cooking. So when I was watching Korean cooking programs, I would recognize certain vocabulary words or expressions that were used when they were cooking in a way that I could relate to. Oh, I remember when I sauteed that vegetable when I was in my kitchen two years ago or last year. Instead of saying saute, they said a different word. So again, I already had a connection in my mind, which is why this is going to help you as well. Now, the third reason why this tip is so important and so useful is right here. This will remind you that English can be fun. English can be fun. It doesn't always have to be stressful and I want you to enjoy English. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you simple how to, or simple steps to actually put this in action. Okay. Here we go back to my screen first. Decide on a topic that you are interested in. Remember, I gave you the example of cooking for me when I was studying Korean. That's the first step. Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to pick a video, article, or podcast that focuses on that topic. Now, the one I watched in Korea for my Korean students, um, 냉장고 부탁해? Yes, the refrigerator. Help me with my refrigerator if I translate that to English. And the show was about cooking and it was a cooking program and I really enjoyed it. So I selected that program. Okay. Next we have the final step is you're going to listen or watch it and then write down at least one interesting thing you learned all in English. So remember, this is the part where you're going to enjoy. You're not trying to sit and take in everything. No, enjoy the program and then write something that really caught your attention. Like, oh, wow, I've never heard that expression before. Write it down. Okay. All right. That's tip number two. Learn something new or interesting. Now we're going to go to tip number three to change your English. All right. Okay. Going back to my screen. Here we go. Tip number three, challenge yourself. That's right. Challenge yourself. Now let me explain what this means. Okay. So challenge yourself. Basically you need to find ways to overcome your fears related to English. It's a fact. English is not the easiest language to learn. And sometimes you feel a little bit shy or scared to speak to someone else. Or maybe there are other things that you are afraid of. When you challenge yourself to do something, you literally take the chains off. You literally free yourself from that fear. Now I'm going to give you three reasons why this is so important. Okay, here we go. So the first reason why this is so important is this will help you become more confident. Trust me when you challenge yourself, you will, after you've accomplished and after you've overcome that fear, you will feel amazing. You will feel more confident. Now, the second reason is that you will, what? It will help you realize that you can achieve more than you first realize. As a teacher, I'm going to be very honest with you. Uh, one of the things I loved the most about teaching in Korea was seeing one of my students excel, seeing one of my students reach their individual goal. So maybe their goal was to give a speech in English. Maybe their goal was to write an email in English at their job. When I saw that student accomplish or reach that goal, I was so happy for them. Why? Because they realized that they could even do better than they initially thought they could. 
The same is true for you when you challenge yourself, okay? All right, now reason number three, here we go. Reason number three is this will give you more opportunities to use the English you learn. You're very smart. You've studied hard, you've studied many books, you've watched my lessons on YouTube, and now it's time to challenge yourself. And what will happen? You'll start to have more opportunities to use what you have learned. Now again, I would love to hear all about your experiences when you challenge yourself. Now, one more thing, remember, um, we're gonna keep going on, I'm gonna show you how to do this exactly in three simple steps. But again, if you wanna keep studying with me, remember you can always join my academy and the link is in the description, okay? I would love to be your permanent teacher. Now, again, we're talking about challenging yourself. So how do you do that actually? Three steps, here we go. So the first step, write down one of your fears related to English. Maybe you are afraid of actually contacting an American or emailing an American. Write that down, okay? Next, you're going to do this. You're going to write down three reasons why you are afraid and three things you would do if you weren't afraid. Why are you afraid to email an American? Is it because you may have the wrong grammar? Is it because they may not respond? Now, what would you do if your grammar was okay? What would you do if they responded to your email? I want you to focus on the feeling you would have when or if you accomplished your goal, okay? Now, the third part, here we go, right here. Figure out one way to overcome the fear and do it immediately. For example, talking to strangers or emailing an American. I had one of my students who's actually in my academy, as I mentioned to you before, and she actually, the link's on the screen and also in the description if you wanna join my academy, and she told me she had never, ever spoken to an American, but she saw that I gave the opportunity to speak to me in a video call, and she took the opportunity. She challenged herself even though she was nervous, and she did amazing. I enjoyed our conversation, she spoke well, and remember, it's not about making grammar mistakes, it's all about being able to convey or express your opinion and your thoughts and overcoming your fear. So I was very happy to talk to her, I was proud of her for challenging herself and overcoming her fear, and all it took was one email to ask me to speak to me. And again, she's in my academy. So again, think about yourself. What are your fears and how can you challenge yourself to overcome them, okay? All right, so we looked at three different tips to help you literally improve your English today. First, compare yourself to yourself. Learn something new or interesting and challenge yourself. Now, you learned three tips that will literally help you improve your English today. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to download the free PDF that goes along with this lesson by clicking the link in the description. And also, you can join the Speak English with Tiffany Academy. You'll see it right here on the screen by clicking the other link in the description. I'm Teacher Tiffany, and I will talk to you in our next lesson. But as always, remember to speak English. It's story time. <laughs> okay, all right, today is just a quick story. So when I was in high school, I had an English teacher. Now she was great, but she was super strict. She had rules that we had to follow and I was a good student, so I followed all of her rules. But there was one rule that she had that was special. The rule was do not eat in her classroom. Okay, that seemed very simple. Now, her class was right after lunch. So I would eat a really good lunch to make sure that I wasn't hungry during her class. So one day, you know, I finished my lunch, it was delicious, and I didn't know if my breath smelled so I wanted to put a mint in my mouth but I had a small tic-tac 
Now a Tic Tac is just a small mint, literally about that size. So I put the Tic Tac in my mint, in my mint, in my mouth. Now again, super tiny. So I am, I was proceeding to walk into the classroom and as I was about to get to my seat, I heard my name, Tiffany. Yes, it was the teacher. She said, what did I tell you about eating in class? Now, again, remember I said she was a very super, super strict teacher. So I could tell by the look on her face that she was serious. So I said, oh, you said there's no eating in class, teacher. She said, so what are you doing? I said, well, I, I'm not eating anything, teacher. She said, what's in your mouth? And I remember that I had a Tic Tac in my mouth. Now, I didn't consider a Tic Tac food. She said, take it out of your mouth and you have detention. Now, to show you how shocked I was, I was a model student in school. I followed the rules, I did well in school, I played sports, I did everything, but I never got in trouble. This was the first time I ever got in trouble in high school and it was for a Tic Tac. A Tic Tac. And 20 something years later, I still have never forgotten that moment. <laughs> so even though I thought it was something small, she said it was still food. So I had to go to detention, which meant I had to have a mark put on my record. I had to stay after school for an hour and sit in this room because I got in trouble. So the moral of the story is Tic Tacs aren't food. <laughs> No, but she was strict, but she was an amazing teacher. And ironically, she's still one of my favorite teachers, even though I got in trouble for a Tic Tac. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story and I'll talk to you guys next week.